Hello and welcome to the Viri for SketchUp series. In this episode, I will continue building the scene. In the previous episode, we used the Chaos Cosmos browser to add our exterior assets. In this episode, we will continue building our scene by adding more detail to the environment as well as exploring the potential of V-Ray Vision. Let's start V-Ray Vision. By default, Vision is already completely interactive, automatically responding to changes in our SketchUp scene. If we move our camera or change the sun, you can see that Vision is responding in real time. Live Link is visualized with this button here. If we click on it, you have the option to stop the live link between Vision and your camera. This can be helpful in cases in which you're still in the process of building your scene and don't want Vision to follow your camera. The same goes for the V-Ray Sun. Once Live Link is stopped, changes in the sun orientation won't be registered. The vision window can be stretched to whatever resolution you would like. But you can also add an aspect ratio based on the render output. That way you can have the same framing as your production renders. Now I would like to demonstrate how you can navigate inside the very vision. There are two different modes in which you can move inside the vision. You can have the orbital view in which you move entirely with your mouse. Middle mouse click for position change, scroll for zoom, left click move for rotation or you can use the first person navigation, which allows you to use the WASD keys for position change, Q and E for height change, and left click move for rotation. If you go to the info panel, you can find all of these shortcuts and more. The sun orientation can be changed by holding down shift, left mouse click, and dragging around. If you want to change the sun intensity, you can do so by holding shift, right mouse click, and dragging around. These utilities provide great flexibility when testing for different lighting scenarios. If you want to go back to your previous set sun, you can simply click on your scene. Next is the automatic exposure. Vision automatically calculates the right amount of exposure your scene needs. If you're working on a night scene and you don't want the auto exposure on, you can click on this icon. Now Vision will take the exposure values from the camera in your scene. This is the setting menu. Here you can enable different options that will improve the quality of your image. Note that with each quality upgrade, your frames per second indicated in the top right corner will drop by some margin. Let's go over some of the options. Every Cosmos asset has different representations of its geometry. This means that there is a high and low polygon version of the asset. Enable proxy load means that Cosmos assets closer to the viewing camera will be displayed with their highest polygon version and objects further away with their low polygon representation. When we turn it off, each asset will be displayed with its highest polygon version. Let's go closer to this rock to see the difference between the high and low polygon representations. Notice the very sharp highlights on the corner of the rock. When we enable the high quality Cosmos assets, you can see a drastic difference. Now I would like to direct your attention towards the tree leaves. When the anti-aliasing is off and we move the camera, you can notice that there is some flickering in the tree branches. This can be resolved by enabling the anti-aliasing. You can also change the movement settings to better fit your preferences. For example, if you want a natural looking camera pan, you can use the smooth movement delay. In the color correction tab, you can use different color correction options to balance out your image. If you want to export an image or animation from Vision, you can do so from here. In a future episode, we'll cover animation in more detail. Finally, we have the standalone application exporter. This feature allows you to export the scene as an external file, which you can load from any computer. This is an easy way to share files between users eliminating the need of downloading scenes and assets. As you can see, all the options in Vision are available here as well. You can load or save different color correction options and share them with different users, as well as exporting images and animations. Now that we're familiar with the Vision, let's add some details to our exterior. As you have probably noticed, we have these empty patches of dirt. Let me show you an easy way to add some grass. In the Geometry tab, we have something called V-Ray Fur. This geometry tool allows you to add hair-like strands to any surface. 
It's generally used to create hair, as the name implies, but we can use it in a non-traditional way, for example, to create grass. First, let's create the surface for the V-Ray fur. Then we need to turn it into a component. If you want V-Ray to recognize where to put fur, you should add a description, grass, to either the component name or the name of the fur in the geometry tab. Now let's select the component and add the V-Ray fur. You can notice that now we have gray hair coming out of the component. Let's make it a bit more grass-like by adding a green material. By opening the asset editor under the geometry tab, we can find fur. Let's change some of its parameters. Usually grass grows irregularly. So to simulate that natural phenomenon, you can add different noise textures to randomize the density and length of our grass. Finally, here's a little tip to optimize your workflow in vision. If you have moved the camera and you want to reset it to its starting position, you can click the C key. Join me in the next episode where we'll finish our exterior by scattering some vegetation with the V-Ray Scatter tool. This was the second part of building up our scene. I hope you found something helpful that you can try in your own work. Thank you for being part of the V-Ray experience.